very dear brothers and sisters, on this feast of Christ the King, I would like to ask that perennial question. It's a question that's important for us to ask ourselves. What is the goal? What is the purpose of all human history? What is the purpose of us being here, of human existence? Where is it all going? What is it all leading to? These are important questions that we must all ask ourselves. Pope St. John Paul II talked about this subject during his pontificate, and he was very clear in giving an answer to this question. He said that the true goal of all history, all human history, and the purpose of all human life is to lead us to Jesus, and especially his coming again in glory, when he will return as the Lord and the King of all creation. This is where it's all leading to. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in the church and in us and in the world. John Paul II so powerfully said that Jesus is the Redeemer of all the human race. And by his precious blood, we can add, which he shed on the cross of Calvary and represented in a living sacrifice of every mass, the true sacrifice of the eternal covenant. Jesus has purchased for God our Father and for all of us an eternal kingdom. A kingdom that will last forever. It will never end. That's what it's all leading to. That's the purpose for us even being here today. The wicked and the undeserving, the unjust, it says in the reading today, the Gospel from Matthew, will be cast out, Jesus says, and they will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. That is to that kingdom that will be peace and joy and forever happiness with the Lord. The righteous to eternal life, the wicked will be punished. Today is the first the feast and solemnity of Christ the King, and it comes at the end of our liturgical year, the 34th week of ordinary time. And so it causes us to reflect, therefore, on the end of the world, the end times. In the Lord's Prayer, which we pray every day and at every Mass, Jesus teaches us to say, Thy kingdom come. This is one of the most wonderful petitions and prayers we can possibly offer each day, even to the point where our hearts begin to long for Jesus to truly come and usher in that kingdom. Thy kingdom come. And we know it's present within our hearts and our midst, even at this very moment as we gather together in worship. Here then is contained a verse, a verse that explains to us the purpose of all human history, of all our human striving and all our works, thy kingdom come. If we read the second psalm, we get a glimpse also of the great battle and the struggle that Jesus first had to fight to achieve his kingdom. Of course, he struggled 
that giving us life on the cross. But it's not life for the struggle and ours is too. It's Jesus' struggle and that is ours. Against what? Against the powers and the principalities of darkness. Against evil and sin, injustice and wickedness. That's why the, the second psalm says, it asks the question, why all this tumult among the nations, among the peoples, why all this useless murmuring that is against the Lord and his anointed one? It says they arise, the kings of the earth, the princes plot against the Lord and his anointed, the Messiah, who is Jesus. Yet, even though they are plotting, this rising up and this rebellion is part of the work of darkness. Psalm 2 continues and says, in warning, because God is all powerful. Now, O kings of the earth, understand and take warning. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with awe and trembling. Pay him your homage, lest he be angry and you perish. For suddenly his anger will blaze. I'd like to finish this thought on Christ the King in the second psalm and that our Father, thy, thy, thy kingdom come, by making two brief comments uh, as part of today's feast. First, if you read the saints, the lives of the saints, so many of them say this. And I agree, and I think maybe you will agree with this too. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who is a mighty King, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, as it says in the book of Revelation, is really, for all of us who love Him, more a shepherd than a king. He prefers to be our good shepherd. He knows us. He loves us. He calls us all tenderly by name. And he leads us day by day as a shepherd does his sheep. He's always seeking out the stray sheep, the lost sheep, because they too will be in the kingdom of heaven. And he loves them. He'll go after the lost sheep. And there will be more joy of that one lost sheep saved than the 99 others, he says. Second, I'd like to end here. If Jesus is a king, then his mother Mary is a queen. We need her. She is queen of all creation who helps and assists always Jesus in the task of saving souls and building up the kingdom of God in our midst. That's her constant prayer and task. More than anyone, Mary, in her life, became Jesus' disciple, following him, listening to him, and praying. Praying for his kingdom to come, that kingdom which would endure forever. She continues to do this from her place in heaven. She's with us. She's among us. And that's because Mary is like Jesus. Even though she is a great queen, a holy queen, Mary, like Jesus, prefers to be more seen as a shepherdess and a mother. 
than a powerful queen. And that's because she prefers to tenderly love us and help us to love one another, to help us journey day by day as children of God, as each day we must travel towards that goal of human history, each of us in our own lives and together as a people towards that wonderful kingdom that will endure forever.